Hey everyone, welcome back from winter break. For our last part of this unit, we're going to talk about acids, bases, and salts. A lot of this stuff you may have covered in earlier years, so we may go a little bit faster, um, but feel free to rewind and rewatch. Um, also, just like the other parts of this unit, a lot of it is compare and contrast. So if you memorize the specific parts of it, you should be fine. So I've also specifically color coded each part and you'll see how um, in the near future. So let's talk about acids first. These are probably the ones that you're the most familiar with and they will all start with the letter H. So if you look at all of these examples, you'll notice that they start with the letter H and it's a capital H. So that should indicate to you that it is the element hydrogen. They taste sour, like lemons. They conduct electricity. Um, they are corrosive, which basically means that they can um, eat through things. And they react strongly with metals, as seen here. Um, they turn blue litmus paper red, hence the color coding. And they have a low pH, which we'll talk about um, later when we get to the pH scale. So there's a lot of uses for acids. You use it every day. Um, sour candies, car batteries, vitamin C, vinegar, you see. Bases are the ones that you may not be as familiar with. They are going to end or have an ending of O and H. And you'll notice that that is a capital O and a capital H indicating two different elements, both oxygen and hydrogen. When you put them together, it's considered a hydroxide. So hydrogen, oxygen, that's why it's called that. Another word for a base is alkali. Um, they like to take hydrogen ions, so they like to react with acids. And if you think about it, a base is taking an H and it has an OH. Just for later reference, what do you think it's going to make? Properties of a base, they feel slippery, so like your soaps. They taste bitter. A lot of people don't know the difference between bitter and sour, so I've included a picture. So like your Hershey's cocoa, um, that's what would be bitter. They're also corrosive, so if you see a tractor trailer driving down the road and you see that corrosive sign, it could be either an acid or a base. They also conduct electricity, and they do not react with metals. So in the previous um, acids, we showed a metal bubbling, which shows a reaction is taking place. And here, bases do not react with metals. And they're going to turn red litmus paper blue, hence the color coding. So some uses for bases are like your Drano. Um, chalk is a base, your oven cleaner. Your blood is also slightly basic. So let's just review what properties did acids and bases have in common. They were both corrosive and they both conduct electricity. So let's talk about the pH scale. We said that acids have a low pH, bases are going to have a high pH, and it basically measures how acidic or basic a solution is. It's going to go from 0 to 14. I know that this picture doesn't show the 0, and that's because a, there's not many acids that go down that far. Um, and each number is 10 times stronger or weaker than the last. So if you go from 7 to 8, 8 is 10 times more basic than 7. 9 is 100 times more basic than 7. So it goes by powers of 10. pH of 7 is going to be neutral, and this example would be pure water. This is going to be um, not your tap water. It'll be like your distilled water. Acids are anything with a pH less than 7. So 6.9 is technically an acid, and the most acidic is 0. So the further away you get from the center of the pH scale, the more acidic it is to the left. For bases, the more you get to the right, the more basic it is. So the most basic is 14. Here's just a couple different things that are found on the pH scale. Um, 
You guys did your fish tanks last year. At a pH of 4, all fish are going to die. So um, you probably wanted to stay away from that. And if you notice, if you have an acidic lake or acid rain, that doesn't bode well for your fishies. Um, bananas are slightly acidic. So anything from here this way is going to be acidic, and anything from here down is going to be basic. So acids and bases, like we said, they love to react with one another. These are called a neutralization reaction. The reason it's called that is because they become neutral. And what did we say we had a pH of 7, something that was neutral? It's water. So when you combine an acid and a base, it creates water, as you'll see, because you're neutralizing it. It now has a pH of 7. And you're also going to create a salt. And salts are anything that have a metal and a non-metal combined. You'll notice that this one looks a little weird. Um, basically, if you see a metal listed first, just know that it is an ionic bond. And so therefore, it's going to be um, a positive and a negative. It's considered a salt. So if you see any metals, we're going to consider it an ionic bond. And therefore, it's um, a salt. And then you also have the water. So acids and bases, when combined, they will always make water and salt. And that is neutral. So this side has a pH of 7. This is just an example. Your salts that you have, notice they'll all start with an element that is a metal. Um, oops, except for this one. This one's a little weird, sorry. NH4 is the, um, it has a pot, it's a positive ion. That's why it's listed as the salt. So we already talked about what kind of bonding do all of the salts show? Ionic, you have a metal and a non-metal. One's going to gain electrons and one will lose electrons. If you have any questions, um, I've added the comparison of acids and bases to the sheet, the study sheet that you had um, gotten at the beginning of the year. You can find the answers on the class website. I also um, will be giving you some extra things to practice if you need it.